Hello, Earthlings. Welcome back. Today, we're going to test the eTaker F2000 and see if it can charge different kinds of power stations. What we have today is three common power stations, the EB3A, the Bluetti AC200L, and the EcoFlow Mini. So all of them, they have different kinds of different requirements, voltages requirements to charge. And we'll have to check each one of them. For the EB3A, it's 12 to 28 volts. For the Bluetti AC200L, it's 12 volts to 145 volt. And for the EcoFlow Mini, it's 11 to 75 volts. The important thing here is that we shouldn't exceed the maximum voltages of each when we set it up on the eTaker F2000 app. Some of some power stations are sensitive to being pumped with higher voltages and they just they just stop, they give you errors. So we have to make sure we're not doing that. And so here's our setup. So you can see we follow the, the wires it goes to a minivan and it should have a very decent size alternator that should be able to pump 800 watts and on the left side is the two solar panels in series total of 200 watts and both of them goes to here and we should expect close to 1000 watt of DC power and by the way, let me introduce you to the F2000's little brother, the eTaker F1000. It is also an alternator charger, and it can do basic stuff, unlike its little, I mean, unlike its big bro, that can do almost everything. So yeah, we have to take note on the uh, maximum voltages, and we'll go to the app, set it up, and we'll test each power station see if we can charge it to the maximum okay now we are at the app so what we're gonna do first is the eb3a from smallest to the biggest earlier we checked the maximum voltage of the eb3a and we saw that it maxes at 28 volts so what we're gonna do is to make sure we don't exceed that go to the uh, charge power station you, you will see that you have a selection of either 24 volts or 48 volts also there's the DC output if you want to use that which is 24 volts and there's also a current limit if you want to set that up so I think the charge power station means to charge a power station so that we're gonna stay there so what I'm gonna do is gonna turn that thing off the run and oh just to mention that Again, I've mentioned this many times, but whenever you change a setting on a port, you're going to have to turn off the port and then do, do your change, turn the port on, and then run. Let's see. So now we can see the DC port is 24 volts. Now it's going up. And 205 watts, which is, I think, the maximum limit of the EB3A. Now what we're seeing here is that we're getting 124 watt from the solar plus 62 watts from the alternator port. Combine that, it's the 200 watts. It works. By the way, let's go, go ahead and check the app of the uh, Bluetti and see what's in there. Okay, so this is the uh, EB3A app or the Bluetti, yeah, it's the Bluetti app. And we can see that it's getting 190 watts from solar or from a DC charge, which is pretty close to what F2000 is showing too. So 190 watts. DC. See how this time is not. Okay. Now let's go back to this app. You can see. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's not 100% equal, like 200. 5 watts there's probably like efficiency something and I'm not sure why it turned to 48 volts which 
is probably an app or a GUI glitch, but it's still working. Let's see. Yeah, it's still working. So that is a GUI glitch that needs to be fixed. See, if you see what I'm talking about in here, it's showing 204 watts and at 48 volts, which is not 48 volts, obviously, because if it's 48 volts, then the EB3A won't charge. Anyway, let's go to the EcoFlow Mini and see what we see in there. All right. Okay, so I just plugged the uh, EcoFlow Mini and we can see that it's pumping. You know, I haven't really changed the, the setting, so we need to change the setting. And earlier we know that the EcoFlow Mini can take as high as 75 volts. So we'll change it. We need to turn it off first. Turn it off. Go to, you know, the DC output, which is, we can go 48 volts. And maybe we could go more 10 amp or 18 amps but actually that's not that's not the setting you know it's I think the right setting is charge power station but I'm not sure but maybe the only difference is that the charge power station is that the the current can vary go up and down but the DC output you can put the limit let's try to use the charge power station and I change it to 48 volts. I turn on the DC port and then I turn the whole system up. See what happens. Okay, so we're pumping 48.3 volts. Now we have to know the limit of the EcoFlow Mini, even though it is 75 volts max, you know, you can put maximum 75 volts and 10 amps it's not the maximum is not 750 watts the maximum charge is 300 watts so you can see that we are getting limited by that we are hitting 96 watts which is pretty much the limit you can see that alternator port is sharing 162 watts in addition to 124 watts of solar equals 300 watts let's take a look at the ecoflow app and see what what's in there Alrighty, so this is the EcoFlow. So you can see it's being charged at 305 watts. So it kind of matches the numbers in the eTaker app. It's right here. Again, we did this a while back, but on the other video, but what if we turn off alternator port? What happens? Okay, let's turn it off. Turn off alternator port. And now it, no, oh, I double clicked it. Sorry. Okay, zero watts. What's gonna happen? Now we're only getting from the solar, which is 119 watts. And let's go check the app. There you go. It matches. So what happens if we turn on the alternator port and turn off the solar? Okay, now we are actually like getting everything from the alternator port, 285 watts or around that. Because the alternator port can, you know, can adjust or it's capable enough to do 300 watts. What it means is that if you turn off solar, it means that the solar is being prioritized, which is nice because that is a free free electricity. Okay, so this is, yeah, it works on the EcoFlow Mini. Now let's go and see the big one, the AC200L. Okay, so the AC200L has been wired up. Earlier on, on this video, we checked that it has a voltage maximum of 145 volts so you can't go over that but it is also limited to 15 amps the total power that you can pump to the ac200l is 1200 watts but it would be difficult to get that from the e-taker f2000 because we can only go up to 48 volts times you know 15 amp which is the limit of the ac200l that is only around what 900 watts 
or 800 watts i'm not sure please do the math for me so let's see let's try if we can actually go more than that okay we go to the dc port which is charge power station 48 volts output voltage you know i'm not sure but i'm just gonna put i'm just gonna put you know that and then the charge power station 48 volts turn it on and then run let's see what we can get Four hundred, seven hundred ten watts. So again, we are getting five hundred sixty-four watts from the alternator port and one hundred twenty-six watts from the solar panels. So as you can see, we can only charge at seven hundred forty-five watts, even though we know that the e Taker F two thousand can go up to hundred thousand one thousand eight hundred watts. The problem here is the combination of the voltage and the, the current if you know the uh, the the physics of it it's kind of like a little bit difficult to match what the blue the ac 200 l is asking so let's see if we can actually cheat okay so as we can see here we are maxing at 740 744 watts so instead of doing a charge power station let's turn it off turn it off we go to charge battery. This is this is the option where you charge lithium lithium iron phosphate or SLA batteries. In here, you can actually like change the voltage all the way up to 60 volts, which is better than 48 volts, obviously. And charging current is up 20 amp. That's that's fine. Now let's see if we can get more than the 744 watts that we saw earlier. Turn it on then run see will it work I don't know um, I'm also new to this so I'm not sure what's gonna happen next 241 watts so this charge battery has three stages which is one of them is the float one of them is the bulk charging and we, we don't control that it depends on what it sends anyways so as you can see we are now getting at 922 watts so it does work 60 volts times 15 maybe that's equal to 917 watts please do the math for me I don't have calculator and I'm really really bad in math I think that's the cheat there instead of going to the charge power station go to the charge battery set the voltage to 60 volts which is the maximum you can do 15 watts which is the ac 200l is is limited anyway but you can do more and now we're charging at almost almost a thousand watts which is pretty good 920 watts using a car is pretty good this is more than what the ecoflow whatever alternator charger can do and you can even like add a, a solar panel so this is way better I like it this is perfect for your RVs you know overlanding your, your boat when you're traveling now you're charging your power station at almost a thousand watt this is really the ultimate alternator charger all right guys so now that I've shown you that you can charge almost any kinds of power station please read your manual read the uh, maximum voltage and do the appropriate configuration on the app because you might break your your power station or I don't know you might break the F2000 if you're not careful and make sure you're you're doing um, the right polarities too even though the uh, e-taker has reverse polarity protection just still be careful just do it right so that it will work so you guys check my other videos I did like a jump start because this one can also jump start a car go ahead and see if I was able to jump start or not and yeah see you guys later bye